are in Matthew, the fifth chapter, and we're going to begin with verse number 33 this evening, and hopefully we will get through this fifth chapter of Matthew tonight. If you have any questions, just uh, lift your hand and I'll, I'll call on you. Very good. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Father, we just pray now that you will be here as we look at your word Guide us and direct us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says with me, Amen. Amen. Verse 33 of Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from the King James <clears throat> Version. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, or yes, yes, and no, no, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. All right, so what Jesus is saying here, and by the way, if you are using a red letter uh, Bible, you'll see that all of these verses are in red. Um, so these are the words of Christ. So Christ is saying here that we are not to, what it, what it means to forswear, it means to make an oath. Don't make an oath uh, of anything, but perform uh, unto the Lord your oaths. In other words, if you say, I'm going to do this, then follow through with it, all right? And don't say, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to do this. I, I, I've, I, I've heard people say, well, I'm going to swear in my grandmother's grave, all right? <laughs> well, grandmother's dead. If she's in the grave, she's dead. And she's not going to help you at all, all right? Unless you call forth demons, all right? You might, you might call forth, I know some people that call forth familiar spirits, family demons, um, to have them help them. And they might help for a little while, but sooner or later, uh, they will, um, they'll have their way with you. You won't have your way with them. And Jesus said, not by earth, for it's his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. Now, we don't probably understand this as much as the Jews would have at the time that Jesus was talking to them. But um, you've, seen these, uh, you've seen these maps of the world where, where the world is laid out. It's, you know, it kind of goes like this. And the, the, the oh, world yeah. is laid out, all right? And when you take a look at that map, the Mediterranean Sea and Jerusalem, Israel and Jerusalem, are, are almost dead center, okay? So the Jews believed that God's entire focus was on Jerusalem. Remember, um, Zechariah says that in the last days, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling and all eyes will be upon Jerusalem. So they thought that because Jerusalem was a holy city, um, some of you have heard me uh, do a teaching on the, the, the topographical map of Jerusalem, how that you can actually see it looks like the outline of a hand. God said that he would write Israel upon his hand, as so you can see his handprint literally upon Jerusalem. So they thought because God thought so intently on Jerusalem, that if they would swear by Jerusalem, by all that is righteous in Jerusalem, okay? Um, uh, I have a friend whose wife is Jewish, and on her ring, on her wedding ring, the inside of her wedding ring, um, is the wording, uh, if, I, if I should forget Jerusalem, may my left hand wither, which comes from the scripture, by the way. Okay, so Jerusalem was an important place to these people. And so they would swear by Jerusalem because they see Jerusalem as the eternal city. 
So if they say, I swear on Jerusalem, that would mean it would be eternal, all right? And so what, what Jesus is saying here is that God already has the earth, okay? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he, and he says, Jerusalem is the eternal city of the great king. It's already mine, all right? So who do you swear by? Well, you would say, I swear by God in heaven. And Jesus is saying, don't even do that. He's saying, if you're going to say something, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Let it be on you. You know, Mike, I remember um, uh, your dad saying to me more than once, you know, he says, business is so, Pastor Dan, he'd say, say business today. He says, you just can't trust anybody. Well, it used to be if you just shook someone's hand, that's all you had to do. All right. Today you have to have contracts, you have to have signatures, and then it may or may not, you know, people may or may not keep their word. All right. So, so who does God swear by? Well, he swears by himself. <laughs> All right. But we're not God. We are God's. We are God's children. Uh, and when I say we are gods, <laughs> there's, there's going to be a big deal now in some religious circles that, you know, that preachers are preaching that we are little gods, okay? We're not little <clears throat> gods. We belong to God. G capital G-O-D apostrophe S. We are gods. We belong to him, <laughs> okay? And so when, when, when we give our word, what Jesus is saying here is that our spirit and our soul that speaks forth should be as though God himself is in us so that our word is like his word. So it becomes perfection. He desires to perfect us. Now, does this make any sense to you guys? <clears throat> All right, so my word needs to be yes. My word needs to be no. And people need to be able to depend upon my word. I hope... Yeah, all the years you guys have known me that you know that if I give my word um, I'll be there yeah. all right in fact I've had so many people say in fact Rita says to me on a regular basis you know when you get invited to a Jones event you don't have to show up for an hour you know they won't be there you know <laughs> and and I told Larry on Sunday I told Jessica's husband Larry on Sunday so you know what, Larry? I told Rita that when this baby dedication starts at 1 o'clock, that's what time they're going to leave home. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, you got to sound now. You know? And so Larry and I are sitting there, and he says, that's right, Pastor Dad. And he just kind of snickered, you know. And sure enough, about a quarter after, people start, you know, <laughs> filing in, okay, because that's just the way it is. All right, well, what happens is, is that, you know what, if you, if you don't give, Rita and I teach a Bible class on Sunday mornings, okay? The class starts at 9 o'clock. When we're there at 9 o'clock, there are people already in the room, all right? But they've gotten used to us starting at 10 minutes after 9 for the stragglers. Guess what's happening? People aren't showing up now until about 10 minutes after 9. We have trained them to be that way. So you will train people how to act and react to you by your own word. Mm -hmm. yeah. By your own word will things stand. Amen. So that's what Jesus is saying. You know, if you want something to happen to take place, then you be a person of your word. If it's going to start at 9 o'clock, let it start at 9 o'clock. Don't let it start at 10 minutes after 9. Okay? And be there. All right, because that's what that's what we have said we're going to do now. That's a simple thing. So when it gets into legal st things like, you know, um, vows that husbands make before their their husbands and wives make before the altar for for weddings and you know and the like the baby dedication we had on Sunday and these types of things. Yes, we will dedicate ourselves to see that such and such a thing takes place, all right? And how good is our word? 
You know, there, there's a really there's a really big controversy. I don't know if you've heard the news today, but America is on the brink of war with North Korea. We really truly are. <sighs> and the question is, can can our will our people will our citizenry trust our president and a lot of it isn't because of things that he has said or hasn't said it's things that people have said on his behalf that he didn't say you know things that the news media have stirred up and you know uh, other questions about him and yet he has said some very stupid things all right and so what does that what does that tell us it tells us you know, you know the, the Bible talks about foolishness, about foolish talking. Mm -hmm. And you guys know that I, I love a good joke. I like to sit down and laugh as much as the next person. But there's a time to be serious yep. and there's a time, you know, to be, uh, to be funny. That's right. Okay? And that's all that Jesus is saying here. So he says in verse 38, You have heard that it has been said... An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And by the way, this was the law of a man by the name of Hammurabi that um, lived long before Christ. <laughs> but I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue you at the law, and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel you to go a mile, go with him too. Okay, let's just break this down. I want to take the 41st verse first. Back in the day that Jesus is talking, Rome was in charge. They were the government. And Roman soldiers would move. They didn't have... <coughs> all the trucks and everything that our armies have today, they would move on foot. If they would go through a village, most people would try to ignore them. But a Roman soldier had the right, if he saw somebody, to say to them, I want you to carry my pack, because they'd carry a full pack on their back, okay? Carry my pack. And that person would have to carry that pack one mile. And what Jesus is saying is this, is that this is your enemy. If your enemy says to you, will you do this or do this for me, to show that you're submissive. What Jesus is talking about here is submission, okay? To show that you're submissive, don't just go one mile, but go two miles. Now for us, that's a lot of walking. But back in those days, they did a lot of walking. Yes. So, you know, so two miles wasn't all that far, okay? For them to walk but jesus is just saying you know show your enemy your submission to them so if they want you to walk one mile go two miles so let's go up here it says but i say to you that you resist not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek turn to him the other also now jesus is not saying here well, 38, you've heard it been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. In other words, the law of Hammurabi said that if someone hits you and knocks out a tooth, then you can have the right to knock out their tooth. If someone has a fight with you, they knock out your eyeball, you have the right to knock out their eyeball. Okay? So Jesus is saying this, but I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, we've all seen movies where the nice guy, you know, is getting beat up and he won't fight back and he won't talk. So um, they, they beat on him and uh, he says, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell. And so they beat on him a little bit more. All right. <laughs> it's not necessarily what is being said here. Jesus is not saying you cannot defend yourself. And he's not saying that you should become a rug for people just to wipe their dirt on. All right? But what he's saying is this. Don't go around looking for a fence. Some people are always looking for a fence. So they're, they're always... In fact, 
Sunday, as we were getting off the boat, someone walked up to me and said, you know, well, why is it they always have to say negative things about me and to me, you know, and all this kind of stuff, all right? And, you know, I just wanted to say, forget it. Just let it go. Just, just let it go, all right? I'll tell you, if, if somebody says something to you that's offensive, one of two things. Okay, I was talking to Erica in the back of the church on Sunday. And Erica's big, you know, she's got this big smile on her face. And she says, Pastor, she says, aren't there a lot of people here? And I said, yeah. I said, there's more people here now than there was for church this morning. And I was hanging on to Eric's hand, and Eric wasn't in church Sunday. The whole way out to Stillwater, it bothered me that I made that statement. I kept, and I didn't say this to Rita, but I kept thinking, man, I hope Eric didn't think I was giving him some kind of subliminal you know, message that, hey, you weren't in church today, and so now there's more people here than there, there were, and, and I was preaching, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So, so I, you know, I went to Eric, and I apologized to him. I try to get that kind of stuff. I try to remember what I say to people and get that kind of thing out of the way. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't remember everything. And sometimes I forget something, okay? And, and as sure as anything, someone will say, well, you know, Pastor Dan really offended me today. I didn't mean to, but I did. All right? All Jesus is saying here is this. Don't be so quick to pick up an offense. Amen. If somebody offends you, just turn the other cheek and wait for them to hit you again. If someone hits you again, you know that they meant it. Mm -hmm. All right? You know that there's a problem there. And 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 it's something and you know and and the Bible gives us clear passage on view on what to do. You know, if someone offends us, then we're to go to that person, you know, and try to make peace. Mm -hmm. All right? You don't wait for them to come to you. Jesus said, if someone offends you, you go to them. All right? So if somebody strikes you in some way, it might be a physical hit. It might be a bump, you know? Um, maybe someone gets... I, I, I remember one day I, was, I had a radio program, and another pastor would work on this radio program with me once in a while. And on the air, he made a fool of me. I mean, he just, I, I made a statement, and this guy just wiped the floor with me, okay? And when, the, when, the, when an advertisement came on, I looked at him, and I said, don't ever do that again. I mean, I was really upset. And he looked at me, and he said, you deserved it. I went like that, and his hand was right there. <laughs> I said, don't ever treat me like that again, okay? And uh, sometime later, he said to me, he says, boy, he says, he says you're dangerous. And I said, why? He says, because you slapped me. I, I just barely touched his hand, mm -hmm. okay? But to him, it was a slap. I hit the table more than I hit him. I felt like hitting him. Did you tell him he deserved it? I felt like pushing him down. You should have told him he deserved it. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> once in a while I feel like pushing people down. I really do, you know. But I, I, I try to reserve myself and, you know, give it over to the Lord. Let it go, mm -hmm. you know. Just quiet down a little bit. But, and so that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, you know, turn the other cheek. Don't let them, don't let the other guy get the best of you. You know what happens when you let the other person get the best of you and you carry anger? You are allowing a soul tie to take place between you and that person and they're ruling you. And more often than not, they are totally ignorant of what they've done. Amen. They could care less Preach. about you, but you are carrying this burden toward them. Amen. And so it's really you that hurts more than them. They don't care. They don't care. They don't even know sometimes. Well, you know, and sometimes they don't yeah. care. Jessica, sometimes they don't even care. Yeah. They want to do it that yeah. way, you know? Yeah. There, there are some people who can just be so mean and rude, yeah. you know? And, and they, they just don't care. They don't care how you feel. You know, you deserve to take it that way, yeah. okay? And it's, it's nuts, but that's the way it is. Yeah. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Now... 
what Jesus is talking about here is just suing for the sake of suing. You know, I take away your coat. Maybe you were, maybe they were in a card game or they were playing dice or something, and they were playing for coats. You know, and the guy lost the lost the card, lost the game, and uh, uh, he wouldn't give up his coat. So the guy said, "I'm going to take you to court over your coat." Jesus said, "You know, let let it go. Get, give me your coat." In fact, give me your cloak also. The, the, the coat would be the outer garment. The cloak would be the garment that it was closer to your body. It's better to be naked in front of these people, you know, than it is to, 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 to sue them. Now, in the culture that we live in, in the culture that we live in, there are some things which cause us to have to sue. Oftentimes, in, in, the, in car accidents, you guys that have equipment, um, the, the insurance companies will sue on your behalf. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay? Rita and I know of a situation where a missionary and his family came back to the United States. The kids got on four wheelers. They went out in the woods and they were following a trail and the hosts child which was a cousin to the missionary's kids came around a corner and the missionary's kid came around the other corner mm. and those four wheelers collided mm. and the missionary's kid got killed okay cousins they had insurance okay but you know how insurance companies are they don't want to pay and it required a lawsuit. And it divided a church. It divided a family. Okay? Because the Bible says you're not supposed to sue. No, that's not what the Bible's saying. The Bible's saying, let the, in that case, you need to let the courts figure it out. Because it's not coming out of your pocket anyway. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come out of the, uh, you know, the money that the, the insurance companies have set aside for this sort of thing. All right, so you gotta let that sort of thing play out. So if someone else sues on your behalf because of some kind of an accident or you know something that something that's gone wrong, let's say you know your um, seal coat thing blows up and three people get covered with you know mm -hmm. hot seal coat whatever, someone's gonna sue you. Okay, you just gotta let that play out. Sure, it's not gonna be fun. I would expect you to call me up and say, Pastor Dan. Here's what happened when you pray with me. Okay. That's going to take a lot of prayer. And you're going to feel awful. Mm -hmm. you know. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here. Jesus is talking about frivolous lawsuits because you're offended. Remember now, we're talking about offenses. Mm -hmm. what, what are we going to do to keep from being offended? Amen. And Jesus is saying to us as believers, always take the high road. You be the one who's going to act like Christ. Remember, Christ never reacted to anything. He always acted. Amen. Even to the cross. He never reacted to the cross, but he acted like the sacrifice. Amen. From the beginning to the end. Okay? So that's what Christ is, ask, is, is, is asking of us that we would begin to act like believers, act like Christians. Remember, we started out with the B attitudes. Here's the attitude that you need to be like. The solemnitudes, okay? This is the thing that is similar to the way you need to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jesus is just following through with those thoughts. <clears throat> he says, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou, turn not thou away. You have heard it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. All right, so here Jesus is saying, To him that asketh and that asks of you, to borrow, turn him not away, particularly if he's an enemy. Now, I'm going to add something here, okay? 
you've heard the you've heard the terminology terminology neither a borrower or a lender be right but there comes a point in time in most of our lives when we have had to borrow something we didn't have it it could be as simple as a cup of sugar all right but you know it may be that that you're in a you're in a position where things are just coming down around your neck and you you've got some bills to pay and if you don't have some money come in somehow um you know and 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 believe me you know god knows where you are and and he you know he's in control but there are some times that we need to become proactive too we need to ask okay so we go to somebody and we ask here's the deal if you can't afford to lose it don't lend it mm -hmm. amen yep if you can't afford to live without it don't give it away mm -hmm. don't don't and, and and i've done i've done this you know i've said okay um you know i i will lend you this money but i've got a bill due so what i'm really giving you is my own house payment don't do that that jesus isn't asking for that honest Amen. okay where, where where i work nobody has any money you know and 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 so these guys they want bibles and that sort of thing and so i had this guy come to me he said pastor dan if you'll help me get a bible he says i, I will I'll, I'll pay you back i'll you know and and he was he was such a nice guy so I trust him, all right? So I called Ed Underwood, and I said to Ed Underwood, you know, you used to have a whole box of these Bibles. You still have one? Because it's exactly what this guy wants. Ed said, yes, I do. I said, how much is it? He said, it's $43.50. So I went to this guy, and I said, can you pay me $43.50 for this Bible at such and such a date? He said, yes, no problem. Okay. So I give him the Bible, give it to him, all right? And three days before he's supposed to pay me for the Bible, he goes out and uses again. So now he's gone from the ministry. Who knows where he is, mm -hmm. all right? And, and I'm stuck for the Bible, all right? And listen, $43.50 isn't that much, all right? It really isn't that much. But, you know, when you're trying to put together $9.10, <laughs> it's a lot, <laughs> you know? All right, so that's just, that's just the way it is. And, and, and so if you can't, I know that in time, and I know that Ed will give me time to pay for this Bible, all right? No big deal, all right? And I should have thought of that, for, I should have thought of that from the beginning, mm -hmm. but my first thought was, boy, I got suckered again. Yeah. <laughs> Rita goes, The Lord says you'll be paid. The Lord says you'd see that. I told you, if I say one thing, Rita will say something else. I know what it says in the Bible, but I don't always think biblical things when I'm upset. Really? And I'm trying to talk to a bunch Gosh. of people that don't always think biblical things, you know, when they're upset. Yes. I tell the Lord, I know I'm going to get a reward in heaven, but I need this now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, you I, never know, he might have took that Bible with him. He did. And it he will, did take it with him. It will turn him around. Yeah. Yeah. It'll turn him around. Yeah, Cordell, once in a while I remind God, you know, the, Bible, the word says that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Mm -hmm. And it's about time that you butchered one of them. <laughs> so, so anyway. <laughs> All right. So, that, and so, remember now, we're talking about attitude. So don't give away something you know, don't loan something to somebody that you can't afford yourself. I, I do not believe that God is asking. Now, I have heard, I have heard people say, I was saving up for a car and there was this need and God told me to give everything. And I did. And this is what happened. I, I know a guy that, that had saved up $3,000 for a car and back, you know, 20 years ago, he had a $30,000 car, brand new $30,000 car given to him, mm. okay? That sort of thing does happen, but you'd better know it was God that told you to do it. That's right. And don't just do it to move the hand of God, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, God, I gave this car. I gave this car, yeah. all right, you know? So 
Yeah, so no, better know it's God that told you to do it when it comes time to do it. Amen. All right, you've heard it said, thou shalt, no, I like this. You've heard it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. By saying to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despise, despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the <clears throat> unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? Now the publicans are the tax collectors, okay? So in other words, um, Jesus saying here that the reward is not in just giving, particularly if it's somebody that you know that can repay you. The reward is in giving something that you know may never come back. Mm -hmm. Because now you've actually planted some seed in which, in which the Father can cause a harvest to come forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, if you get blessed, if, if Pat Hogan comes up here tonight and he says, Pastor, I need to borrow 10 bucks. Well, I got 10 bucks, and I know that Pat's good for 10 bucks. Okay? So what good is that? Right? What I need is somebody that needs 10 bucks, and I know they're not good for 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Or I know that they're just trying to, you know, that they're just going to hook me. Hook them again, you know? All right? And, 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 you know, and I can honestly do that in the name of the Lord. Amen. Because once in a while you do find, remember um, the, the, the story about the little boy that kept crying wolf. <laughs> and when the wolf finally did come, nobody would believe him, all right? And we all know people like that. We all know people who are broke. Can I borrow 10 bucks, okay? And uh, we never know when they just might really need the 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, uh, I won the $100 dollar lottery in Canada. And uh, I had met this guy at, at work, and he wanted to borrow five bucks. Uh -huh. Now I didn't even have any money left over after that, so I gave it to him. I, then when I see him next time, I said, I asked him, do you have five? And he didn't even look at me. He kept going. Yeah. He ignored <laughs> me. And I felt kind of like he ripped me off. I felt like, well. And he probably did. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I take it a different road. For five bucks, you found out what kind of guy he is. Yeah. That wasn't yeah, so he bad. He kind of felt like insulted in a way, or kind of like, you know, like, got so much money if I didn't have any bag it was all gone I, I think that one thing that we I, I want to say this and I'm not even sure that this fits into this scripture right here but don't give to people just because they look like they need it there are times when very rich people go through some very tough tr trials that's true and and they need they need some help too. People look like they've you know, they look like they've got it, you know, and maybe they just they've hit a tough bump in the road, and 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 sometimes those are the toughest people, you know, to give to. I'm, I'm going to tell this story right here because this, this is a cute story. Rita and I have these friends. Their names are Will and Jackie, and uh, in the assemblies of God back a number of years ago, say 30 years ago, it was a very common practice for pastors or for associate pastors when the church would have some sort of a dinner for them to have what they call grocery showers. Now a grocery shower is where people in the church go to the grocery store and they buy a sack of stuff, okay? They bring it to the church and they give it to the pastor, to the associate pastor. So Will and Jackie had just gone to this church, that, and the church was having a welcoming fellowship for them. And so to welcome them to the church, they had a grocery shower. So there were all these bags of groceries, you know, and, and Will and Jackie started putting all this stuff in their, in their um, pantry. And they came to a box of macaroni and cheese. And it was very evident that this macaroni and cheese had been opened up. I mean, they didn't even try to just, you know, cut around it with a, with a box cutter. 
but they ripped it open, you know, and just ripped it open, then taped it shut, and it was just kind of ugly, you know, looking, all right? Well, Will and Jackie came to a point where they used everything in their pantry except this box of macaroni and cheese, okay? And so Will said to Jackie, he says, this is what we've got left. We've got to feed the kids and feed us. He said, he says, this is going to have to be like the, the woman with the uh, flour and oil. We're going to make our last meal and die, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Jackie goes to the cupboard and she gets this macaroni and cheese. And uh, she opens it up. She, she rips off all the tape that's on it, you know? And, and opens up the, the box, and inside, inside is a $20 bill with a note. And it says, uh, we know that when you get to this box, it'll be the very last thing in your pantry. Uh -huh. And you're going to need this money to go along with it. Okay? So, uh, so they, had, they had macaroni and cheese and 20 bucks. You know, I, I thought that I think I always think that's a good story. It is a okay? good story. Yeah. So bless somebody sometime that, you know, they, they may not look like they need it, but you never know when somebody's going to need it. It's right. hard to see them sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's just hard to see that. So, all right. So in other words, he says, uh, he says even the tax collectors will loan to people that they trust. <laughs> <laughs> And that'd be, that'd be like going to uh, uh, what, what, a loan shark. <laughs> you know, I'll loan you this money, but it's going to be 50% interest every day that you don't pay it back. All right. <clears throat> be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I think this is neat, this 48th verse. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. How? By your attitude, by the way you act toward things. Not reacting, but acting. Give as the Lord would give. We don't deserve it. That's right. But he's given us Christ. You know, yeah. And, and see how we are. You know, it's like sometimes we just kind of spit in his face. You know, all the things that God has done for us. All right. Any questions or thoughts or ideas before we go on tonight? You know, you're saying about we give you know money every time we pull to like a red light or something. I just feel like I just need to give something that's out there. And Eric always gets no, oh, no, 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 they're just they're just doing that. I go, but what if they're not? What if these people, you know, it don't matter. I don't care if that's what they have to do. You know, and they're making a fool. It don't matter. What if they're not? Yeah. Just what if? Right. And that dollar could buy them, you know, five bucks, whatever you got, could buy them, like, you know, a loaf of bread or something. And they might just do it because we don't know. And it don't really matter. Yeah. You know? All I can say is in those cases, just be led of the Lord. Yeah. You know? Like tonight at the restaurant, you know? Um, I gave the guy an extra buck. I felt like I was supposed to, you know. I, I look, I looked at, I looked at the, I, I looked at the tab, and and you know, and and I thought, okay, this is what I'm gonna give. And I thought, well, what's just one more buck? You know, it's like yeah, maybe it'll help him. It Who will. knows? Yeah, right. he might need another dollar for something. Car payment, house yeah. payment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, a buck and. But when you're scraping together nine dollars and ten cents, a buck is all. I mean, I felt like Diamond Jim Brady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I got paid from the time I told you that story about the nine dollars and ten cents. So, Praise God. Yeah, so it's 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 not like that now. <laughs> but I, all I'm saying is this: is that you know, I, I I just looked I just looked at that and I thought and I and I just sensed I was supposed to add a dollar to the tip tonight, and I don't know why. You know, he had a ponytail and, you know, I mean, he had all the features that I didn't want to tip, but I did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Are we still recording this? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Good humor for the end of the class. Pat's got it. Uh, you found um, like a birthday, a Christmas card, a birthday present. You know, send money, uh-huh. like twenty dollars to someone. Then when they have a birthday, then they send you twenty back. That's not real generosity. I know. You know, <laughs> Rita and I talked oh, about yeah. that. Uh, my mom is like that. I send her 20 bucks for Mother's Day and she sends me 20 bucks for Father's Day. You know, it's like we're just changing the same. We might as well be changing fruitcakes, you know? <laughs> so we quit that. I started sending her flowers. I told my sister, I said, we just keep sending back the same money. So, I just, like I said, personally, I, feel, I know that those guys are just working. Because I know people that are down and out, and they have more than enough pride to not do that. Yeah. They'll make it. They'll make it. You know what I mean? So those guys are just working. Yeah. What if they're not, though? Because they are. Yes, Real yes. bums. Real bums have too much pride to ask like that. Real bums have too much pride. <laughs> they're, they got nicer clothes and shoes on than I have. Some of them do. Yeah. All right, let's pray before we... Somebody... <laughs> This, this, uh, before this goes viral. <laughs> Father, we just thank you tonight for the opportunity you've given us to uh, study your word. And I pray now that you will help us to be honest and to be generous and to have the right and proper attitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.